to the health too many nice talks to digest too little time thank you sir uh, i am here to share a few uh, framework slides not too much about what we do and uh, i just try to point out my life's journey all the colors you can see different domains metallurgy to software to mechanical and now i'm mostly in medical domain but i am i'm here to talk about academic research to industrial translation and uh, all my uh, journeys in life in the last 30 years i could see a big fat wall uh, and i'm re remember uh, good morning once again uh, so i have been uh, asked to speak uh, something on education so i have put uh, the title as a perspective on education particularly from the inclusive manufacturing point of view and uh, some some of the things which i am going to share is also based on uh, our experiences uh, of what we have done in last 10 years uh, particularly three notable things are uh, we had a uh, uh, a program with stanford university and all india institute of medical sciences called as a stanford india biodesign uh, where there has been a great learning uh, there is a course on inclusive innovation which i and ambuj run at iit delhi so we had a four sessions of this particular course and uh, there has been a great learning from that and also uh, we also have a a translational research lab uh, of about 30 people which only looks at how to take ideas to all the way to market uh, which is in place for 10 years so based on that uh, some of the experiences i thought i'll share it so firstly uh, i would like to say that uh, we have assembled here uh, for a very really great opportunity particularly in the space of inclusive manufacturing why i think so is first is that uh, as we see institute and universities are slowly moving from knowledge dissemination to knowledge creation to knowledge application and i think uh, so we are at a very uh, say right time to think about inclusive manufacturing in a big way and uh, another thing which we are also seeing that uh, expectation of stakeholders is changing uh, particularly from the educational institutes it is not only happening from the bottom up as ravi mentioned that people are asking what did the institutes do for us to also from the top down when like prime minister says janta se jude project per kaam kare or let's say when president says that uh, universities should become public spaces for innovation taking the grand challenges facing society so uh, this expectation is coming from all directions and it's a right time to think about that and we also have i think the best thing is we have a new generation of students who are extremely excited to work on real world projects would like to connect with the real world and probably would like to engage in anything which can probably lead to a social impact and i think that is a very uh, great point we have and also a uh, very interesting thing is we always think of uh, technology improving the lives of a people but i think when we talk to people particularly when i talk to people from workers of seva and others technology is also kind of taking away the livelihoods so i think that's another very important aspect uh, a dimension which we haven't looked at very seriously and uh, outlook of industries is also changing because of the globalization and competition now uh, it's not just possible to have a financial sustainability without social impact and uh, very interestingly there are bigger research challenges once we start looking at uh, inclusive space uh, like there was a mention about industry 4.0 and what is the kind of research challenges which it throws away if we want to deploy them in industries globally but i think if we just focus our attention to look at the manufacturing which happens in unorganized sectors we have even bigger research challenges to address and i think probably we have not looked at that and in the whole game the role of uh, uh, public funded institutions is becoming very important that uh, there are number of needs which country uh, there are number of needs which country has and i think uh, uh, which are not market driven so how do institutes can play a greater role in taking them to market is a very interesting in you know, overall i would say that this is a very right time when we are discussing about inclusive manufacturing just to uh, give inclusive manufacturing from our perspective the way we use in courses etc so we say inclusive manufacturing is any efforts which are targeted towards use of technology to create livelihoods for a people particularly at the base of a pyramid and the marginalized societies or the disabled as it was discussed and also 
innovation where actually the value creation not happens just for individuals but to the society as a whole and uh, addresses cha addressing challenges which are not market driven there are large number of them and how do you work with business models which can not only give you financial sustainability but also a social impact and i think that's a domain uh, we take it as a inclusive manufacturing when we work with uh, courses and other aspects uh, so going through these last 10 years there have been a lot of uh, learnings and i would say challenges i thought i'll just mention in two slides and then close it so first thing is uh, you can't solve the problems of people sitting in a laboratory and i think a co creation is a very important component and i think uh, even for somebody to work in let's say a rural area uh, i think to be called as an insider it takes like enormous number of years for you to be called as one of to be you to be a, an insider among them when they start sharing their problems etc so i think it's a very long journey and uh, co creation at every stage from uh, need identification to solution identification to dissemination is a very important aspect uh, and need to impact is a very long journey suddenly the moment somebody has a good idea we start thinking of an impact and i think it's a pretty long journey and we have to divide it into various steps and uh, and each step has to be looked at very differently and uh, this journey needs lot of uh, mentorship resources and incentives if when we look at thousands of projects which are done from educational institutes and uh, the kind of impact which would have been possible but which did not happen uh, there are mainly three reasons we see either there is no mentorship or resources or incentives to do that and uh, since many institutes which are assembled here also come from the technology space when we try to take one of some of our ideas to market which are now selling very well in the market we found that the problems with technology are lesser there are more serious challenges with like management social sciences and let's say design which need to be addressed uh, so technology is a very small component in the whole game and multidisciplinary inputs is very essential in this particular space and that's probably a number one challenge uh, for a country like ours that what are the incentives for people to come together and uh, probably work as a teams and uh, teams partnerships and collaborations i think we need more innovations uh, how to probably see that uh, a team is complete in all respects uh, particularly take an idea to market is very very essential and we have also seen that in the inclusive innovation space you also need a very different engagement model just to give an example we had a wonderful uh, functional prototype of a product we transfer the technology to industry but industry did not do anything for 2 years because uh, it was not profitable for them to actually take it to the market probably they would have produced uh, by investing and put the prices about 12000 rupees or 15000 rupees and we know they they very well knew that users cannot pay that kind of a price so one of the models which we did is we got them the development cost met and negotiated that price at 3000 rupees and i think it worked and now the product is selling very well in the market so i think how do you bring these new engagement models is also a very important and the whole idea is to look at a system level thinking if uh, a solution doesn't reach people because of 200 reasons i may I, i may probably address 199 but still that one can actually let you down so uh, the system level thinking basically looks at this entire perspective in a much more way very interestingly what we looked at is when you start looking at uh, problems which are more knowledge application where research component is not very high it suddenly throws away new research challenges so generally the our approach has been a reverse that you create knowledge first and then look for application but i think if you start engaging in application you end up with very big research challenges which can be addressed and uh, uh, that actually is also a little bit experience if you look at the first 10 phd student i i guided and the last 10 which i am guiding the profile is very different and these students are working on much interesting problems which are all driven by application rather than pure creation aspects and uh, just to last slide is uh, what can like educational institutes do in the whole space to let's say ramp up this entire process is that i think definitely our curricula is not conducive to inclusive or overall i would say inclusive space and i think uh, 
uh, or as such for promotion of a design, innovation, and entrepreneurship. So I think we need to seriously revisit. And uh, biggest thing is, how do you break the barriers of working in silos? Because even if you take a simplest of the product, you need like at least five specializations to come together to take it market. And what are the incentives for doing that? Uh, curriculum should have, like we saw that last five years of experience, that if you provide more team-based, need-driven, experiential learning type of a components, they're extremely popular with students. And students are coming not in hundreds, but in thousands to engage in such activities. Uh, freedom and ownership to students is something which probably uh, is a very big thing in educational institutes. Generally, faculty is a culprit, doesn't allow students to freely think and probably come up with a solution, imposes more of their ideas onto students, which actually kind of kills a lot of innovations. And I think if we can provide those freedom and ownership, uh, many good things can happen. Uh, this is another small challenge which we have is uh, most of our metrics of evaluation for faculty and institutes are related to either knowledge dissemination or creation. How do you bring the metrics of evaluation for a knowledge application is a, a very big challenge. And uh, allowing people to fail and fail fast, I need not repeat. And uh, also new frameworks for interaction with word. The moment I say I want something where the benefit should reach people, uh, I need to engage with the outside world. How do I bring the outside world to campus or campus people to the outside world? I don't think we have a very good frameworks. I think in last 10 years, we could create some, but I think more such frameworks are needed. And uh, in the whole case, I think the role models and case studies we found to be very, very important. And I think uh, role mod, the, I think the, we generally, and I would say undervalue the concept of role models or to bring role models face to face with the student. Just to give an example, like uh, IIT Delhi had about six unicorns in last 10 years. Uh, and uh, now you see that we don't have to tell anybody to do that kind of an entrepreneurship in the campus. You can easily see dozens of startups operating from hostels. Now the challenge is, how do I actually see that in next 10 years? I have, let's say, half a dozen unicorns in inclusive manufacturing. And I think if we are able to do, I think we have succeeded in it. Thank you.